Terrific. Um, I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order for December 13th at 7.03 p.m. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, um, may I have a motion to go into executive session to discuss pending litigation? Yep. Sarah, may I have a second? Yeah. Mike, all in favor? Thank you. Um, so we are back in open session, and I will give the first selectman's report. Um, my last COVID update was on December 9th. At that time, there were a total of 1,921 cases. Today, the health department reported an additional 26 cases. Tomorrow's booster clinic is fully booked, and that will be the last one until vaccinators and volunteers are available to staff additional clinics. Um, I enjoyed meeting with Congressman Jim Himes today, and I thank him for his visit to Darien. I appreciate his offer of assistance in identifying federal grant funding possibilities for us to pursue for infrastructure projects in the future, and um, especially as it relates to um, flooding. Mr. Hines reiterated his office is always available to assist with visa or Medicare or Social Security problems, um, passport issues, things like that. The State of the Town meeting was held last Monday and uh, Monday evening, and if you missed it, the recording is available on Channel 79. FEMA opened a disaster recovery center in Darien at the Neroten Heights Fire Department and to assist with residents in securing aid. And the last two days for residents to um, visit this in person are tomorrow and Wednesday um, between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. The Small Business Association Help Center at the library is still open. That'll be available until December 29th. That's actually when applications are due also. And um, please check with the library for their hours of operation. West Cog will be initiating, initiating an RFQ, a request for quotes, for the Metro North New Canaan Branch Noise Pollution Abatement Feasibility Study. There are many grade crossings, tri uh, railroad crossings, that require prolonged horn warnings, and the horn noise is excessive and negatively impacts the lives of those living nearby. The first selectman from New Canaan, a representative from, Dare, um, from Stanford, and myself will be serving on the consultant selection team, and I will come back to you with more information as it's available. Um, I want to congratulate Jamie Gore on the Park and Rec, in the Park and Recs Department. Jamie was honored with the Young Professional Award by the Connecticut Parks and Rec Association. And a new building committee has been formed for renovation projects at the three elementary schools, Hinley, Holmes, and Royal. If you have construction, architectural experience, financial, or legal expertise, we hope you will consider volunteering on this committee. Uh, please uh, reach out to the Selectman's Office for further information on that. Saturday is the Wreaths Across America. The ceremony is at Grove Street um, Cemetery, it begins at 12 o'clock, and um, I welcome you to join me with this, at this gesture of gratitude. Finally, on a very happy note, congratulations to the DHS football team. It was an unbelievable game, Marcy and I. I know, I don't know if anyone else made it, but we had a blast. Um, so excited for the team and really happy for the seniors um, for this win. So thank you. And that's my report. Kate? Um, we have two long-term employees retiring at the end of this month, um, Dave Keating from Penny and Zoning, and um, Jeannie Folds in Parks and Rec. Some of you, if you've ever had to arrange a meeting, you know Jeannie, because <laughs> she's in the meeting room uh, organizer. Um, so we will be interviewing for new zoning off enforcement officers soon, and the parks and rec position is going to be filled internally, which will then create another vacancy um, to be filled. Um, but they've both
both been here over 30 years, so um, you know it's a loss, but great for them. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to tell you, I drove up to Highland Farms this afternoon, and the landscaping is nearly complete, and um, it really it looks good. So I'm very happy to see that happening. And I'll just add that we also posted the media manager position. That's a part-time position, 19 hours a week. And we are, um, we are really hoping that somebody um, sparks somebody's interest and they, um, they let the first selectman's office know. So we have selectmen serving as liaisons on different um, committees. Does anyone have any updates? Uh, uh, I have one. Uh, related to the uh, Blight Review Board meeting that we had uh, last week. Uh, just briefly on December 8th, 2021, the uh, board met here in this room at 5.30. It was the first post-election meeting for that board, so the first order of business was elected chair. George Riley was voted uh, by the membership to continue in that position. It was also noted that uh, we'll need a new RTM rep, as Michael Carlo indicated, uh, or uh, resigned his spot. And, we are working on that. We then adjourn to executive session to hear a status report from one of the representatives of one of the properties, actually case number 17-013, who uh, came and spoke to us about the status of trying to uh, remedy that property. After returning from executive session, we went over the blight case status report with uh, Officer Robert Solito, the blight prevention officer. In brief, we have nine properties on that list. Three are on the watch list, which means they're either have a fine assigned, but we're holding that in advance while some further information is gathered, or they're in the process of going to uh, hearing. Uh, there are five uh, properties that are post-hearing that are either accruing fines or about to have fines uh, set. And then there is one property in the process of having a hearing date designated. Uh, the board also discussed generally the need to be uh, vigilant in pursuing remediation of these properties, particularly around some of the new uh, development, commercial developments that are going on. Because when those are completed, there's going to be more traffic and more uh, people going through and more attention uh, paid. And that was it. OK, thank you. Okay. Marcy? Sure. Um, we had our first meeting of the Oxridge Building Committee. It was on Thursday via Zoom. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have students at Oxridge, so I am able to see it as it's progressing. And it's it's really a beautiful and remarkable project. You can see they've, they've streamlined it very well. Um, great committee, very, very well organized. It's in great progress. Uh, as of now, their completion date of the academic building, so this will not include things such as the gymnasium and the, and the library, in the cafeteria, but the academic building is set to be done by um, May of 2022. They have no intention of bringing the kids in there by then, but at that point they can start to bring in some of the furniture um, and start to do some of more of the internal work. At this point they're on budget, uh, which I think is fantastic considering when this project was first you know, initiated, it was in a time that inflation hadn't risen at that point so much. Um, there was a little bit of a delay originally, they were looking for an April 2022. There was a delay in some of the roofing supplies, as you can imagine the supply chain is is an issue, but uh, they've gotten through it pretty well. Um, at this point, we had a, a large meeting with the Furniture and Design Committee. They brought in, showed us all the all the new new uh, desks and chairs and um, technology equipment they're going to be bringing in, which was very exciting. Um, and they've they've stayed on budget for that as well. One of the things that I thought was great to hear is that this building is being built for. Um, more, more students. So as of right now, they have about 490 students at Oxridge, and it has a capacity of 760. So that's really good to hear that there will be some space um, in that building if, if need be. Um, I think that's about it. As I said, the supply chain is not as big of an issue as I was concerned that it was going to be. They're trying to get in these furniture orders as soon as possible to make sure that those orders get in so that those, those desks and stuff are in by the end of the year. Okay. Sarah, Thriving Youth, do you have anything? Um, thriving Youth will not meet again until January. Um, I am grateful for you mentioning the different people that we're looking for on the building committees for Henley Homes and Royal. And then keep looking out for more information for the Think Smart Before You Start campaign. That will yeah. continue through the end of December. So We're getting a lot of good publicity for that. Yeah, we're getting okay. a lot of nice calls. So Yeah, good. Really.
<laughs> Another plug. Yes, um, so um, John is on ARPA in IT, but they have not met yet. So we'll wait on that, right? Right? Okay. Um, so next on the agenda is new business, and that's to discuss and take action on a request to appoint the Board of Education as the Royal School Roof Project Building Committee. So, Dr. Adley, would you like to speak to this? Would you like to hear or there? Sure. Or? Oh. 1879, I'd like to hear. You, you want to go there? Yeah. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. It's nice to see some f familiar faces here, some more familiar than others. Um, and uh, th thank you. Congratulations. You brought us good luck on, on, on Saturday for the, for the kids. <laughs> uh, Chairman Dunneen sends his regards. He's on his way to the airport with his, with his daughter at this particular time. Uh, so tonight I just ask for your consideration of uh, a resolution uh, that kickstarts the project uh, for the roof replacement at the Royal School, which covers about 80 or 85 percent of the roof. To get that started, uh, we need the appointment of the committee. Traditionally, when we have a roof to be completed, the Board of Education has served in that capacity uh, under the guidance of Mr. Lynch. Uh, and that's basically what we are, we are asking for this evening. Thanks uh, to Kate uh, for drawing up the resolution as she has done uh, in the past. Uh, so this would be the, uh, this, this will come before you just to ask to, to establish the building committee. It gives the building committee really what the, the um, Office of Construction and Grant Management really want at the State Department, which is uh, the announcement of the building committee and the formation of that building committee to hire an architect and also to submit for reimbursement, grant reimbursement. Those are the main, there are certain other things that are listed here, but those are the main functions that the State Department of Education and um, the State Department of uh, Connecticut is uh, actually looking for. So with that, I'm happy to open up. This is, this is kind of what we have done for Henley and Holmes. Uh, that are just being completed. They will actually they're complete at the moment and we'll be closing out those projects uh, shortly. Okay, so we'll open it up to questions. I have a question, Dr. Adley. Sure. Um, the roof could, when will, when will that project start? And I'm kind of wondering why it's not being done at the same time as the um, Projects? Yeah, yeah, the regular. Yeah. So this project probably will start us somewhere around probably September, if not sooner, okay. depending on the supply chain, um, how that goes. Uh, but this doesn't cover all the project. That, uh, in this particular building, there's the library, and there's a first grade wing that are not, that is not covered, but it will be covered under the project. So only the only the, the parts of the project that impacted the parts of the building it, are included in the actual major project, which is the same for the other two schools. So it doesn't make any sense from a construction point of view to try to have all of the equipment there at the same time doing the whole project at one time, no? Uh, well, we're, we're, right now we're, uh, that building is like 25 years old and some of the roof, uh, there's leaks in it, we, we, we gotta get that done. It's not gonna negatively impact uh, the project, so we, we just wanna proceed with it. Okay, so you don't wanna wait, okay. How long had the roof projects been in the capital plan? For a while now, right? No. Uh, so a couple of those other projects for Henley and Holmes, at least, uh, t at least one of them was 2019, 2020. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No. no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the resolution before us. If there are no objections, I'd like to waive the reading of the resolution. No objection. Okay. All right. Um, may I have a motion to approve the resolution as presented? Mike, yes. and may I have a second? Sure. Um, Marcy seconds. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for all Thank you, support. Dr. Thank Adley. you. Okay. Number three on the agenda is um, discuss and take action to request capital projects from the Board of Selectmen. And we've discussed this um, in the past, and if you have any capital projects that you would like to propose, you can bring them forward now. And um, if... So I think in, in the email I sent out to you, I um, told you the ones that I put in. Right. One is to rework the town website, which has not been redone in over a decade. Here, here. Pardon? Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other I've put in, I proposed, is a shed 
at Highland, um, which we had talked about when we purchased the property, that we would look for a place where we could store some landscaping equipment, um, and if done well, we could maybe put a porta potty shed to hide a porta potty there. Um, so those are the things that I've put in. But um, you know, as we discussed, if there are projects that you all want to see in town, you know, let me know so that I can you know include them in the submission. So the one thing that comes to mind for me was the think smart before you start it was not in the budget last year. We'd like to make sure that the, there are monies allocated. I think we'd initially discussed possibly five thousand, and I think we were discussing possibly raising that slightly. We did not maybe order enough promotional materials. People were very happy to have them. So I'd like to see if we can increase the amount from 5000 to 6500 I don't know if it was in the budget yet or not. OK, that would be actually an operating item if we're going to do that on an annual basis. But Yes. Um, OK, okay. So, this, okay so it would not be under capital, it would be under operating. OK. Right, but that's fine. That's, um... can, I, can I suggest we reach out to the police commission first to see? Yeah. We can, yes. They had been very kind to pay right. for the initial um, out of the false alarm fund and the, with the association, so we can definitely ask. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, Kate, you have the shed and the uh, web upsite, the web update? Web upgrade, yeah. Okay. So, may I have a motion to... You don't have to, do, you don't have to move those. Those are in there. I okay. That. But okay. if there's anything that um, the rest of you want to... You know, it's okay if there's nothing. Okay. John? So these seem like important but smaller projects. There's still the big issue around you know, Pear Tree Point Beach and what are we going to do about flooding and you know, all this stuff that's been kind of coming up. And I, I don't think we've had a chance to meet and come up with a plan to articulate a path forward on those things. It will ultimately require some capital expenditures. So at some point, we've got to get our minds around some of that. Uh, both as a board and in terms of input from the public uh, to start to take some steps in that regard. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be, I think, extra to your yeah, list, so obviously, mm -hmm. and a, a much, much, much bigger deal to consider. But I just wanted to make sure we hadn't lost our, our path on that. I think you'll hear a little bit about that on Friday. Mm -hmm. I, and I agree with John on those points. I would throw uh, you know, the discussion of Egerton you know, into, that, okay. into that mix. Uh, and uh, not related uh, so much to a capital project. I know I mentioned the notion of studying and ensuring that we have sufficient sidewalks and crosswalks. I know that you mentioned the, the notion of the crosswalks is, is somewhat complicated, but uh, you know, I think it's something that uh, you know, we should study and be looking into uh, whether or not that bubbles up to a capital project, I'm not necessarily you know, sure that that does, but just wanted to mention that. Well, the sidewalk budget was increased 50% last year, and this year it'll be at the same amount. So there is a, there is a long range plan for the sidewalks. Um, and I think maybe that's something that we could co go over also on, on Friday. Sure. Right? Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah, one other smaller addition to all that. I, I can't recall where you ended up with payment processes for the town. So in other words, for town residents to come forward and they want to use something besides credit cards, whether it's ACH or Venmo or whatever. I, I'm not saying you have to do all of that, but I just kind of wonder what the best practice for the most advanced town in Connecticut is in terms of accepting things like that. Because I know the credit card fees and all that have cost us a lot of money. We, we looked at that on the Board of Finance, or at least thought about it, but I, it's been a while since I've asked about it, and I didn't know where you guys stood on that. If you're going to be looking yeah. at the website, whether uh, bring that up because we're going to be th uh, thinking about the website, making sure the website design is integrated with these kinds of payment vehicles so that it's easy to navigate and use and, and all of that. That may be worthwhile. It may, may, may be worthwhile to think about that holistically. Yeah, there's a couple of issues around that. Um, and, um, one of the goals with upgrading the website would be to try and um, make that whole process easier. But part of the problem is because we have a number of different types of software, because we choose to go with the, the best software for the function rather than trying to get one provider who does everything but 
marginally, um, you have, we end up having different processors. So if you want to, um, if you want to pay for your beach permit and in the same website visit, um, pay for your building permit, we don't have the capability to do that because the processing comes from two different places. Um, it is still a goal. The, I mean, the other issue with the credit cards is not as much how we process, but um, who pays the fees? Um, and whether or not paying credit card processing fees are a part of doing business for us as an entity, or if it's a charge that we should pass on to the, to the consumer um, for the convenience of doing it online. And um, that's been a, yeah, we can talk about I can tell you my we, position, you know, we can talk about that at length, but it's but been, a, it's been a debate and we actually do both. There are some departments where you pay a fee in order to transact business online and there are other areas where we pick up the fee. Sometimes because it's simply like, if you're paying for your daily parking at the, uh, at the meter, it's just not possible to add that convenience fee. Um, but if you want to pay your taxes online, we're charging you for that. So. Yeah, my point was more about sort of payment methods as opposed to relitigating. Re yeah, we are, we are becoming more and more open to the various payment methods and um, one of the things you'll see in the budget this year will be um, health department looking to become more computerized and able to accept um, online payments um, as to many of the other departments. But including that ease in the, the website is important. Any other questions? Okay. So, Kate, should I ask for a motion to include your items now? No, I don't think we need to. I no. Think I, okay. I, I've got the uh, sense. I don't think there's a need for a motion. Okay. On, on any of these. Okay. One quick question. I'm sorry. Do we have a placeholder in the budget for IT purchases based out of a possible outcome? Is that under maybe operating for IT or? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Well, if, if the IT Steering and Governance Advisory Committee comes up with a plan for things that the town should do and we decide to act on those things, how would we purchase those things? I think we'd have to come forward with a special appropriation request. Got it. Um, okay. Because we really cannot anticipate. Um, but they also will be um, screening any of the requests that are coming to them um, for their appropriateness and you know, hopefully they won't. You know, we don't want things to grind to a halt as we get that committee going. Um, but we, you know, part of the purpose is to help us make sure that we're making decisions that work for the, the town's Yes. Okay, I'm good. You're good? Yep. Okay, so if there's no discussion on, in, any further discussion on that, we'll move to reappointment of advisory committees. So the Board of Selectmen has the authority to appoint advisory committees for a period of one year and we have a number of committees that have ongoing work and need to be reappointed. A list of the committee members um, on those committees was included in your package and may I have a motion to appoint the following advisory committees. So I'll read the committee name and then I will I'm going to read who is on the committee. So the first committee is the ARPA Fund Steering Advisory Committee. And that is John Zagratsky, Frank Huck, Dan Baumgartner, Martha Banks, Kevin Cunningham, Bill Jensen, and Monica McNally. So um, Kate, I can do all of these in under one motion, correct? Yeah, we usually do it all as one. Okay, okay. So the second committee is the IT Steering and Governance Advisory Committee. And on that, we have David Young, Holly Schultz, Jeff Adams, Bob Shredders, Jen Trineski, Jim Coughlin, Lois Schneider, Rob Cardone, Sean Calvillo, Millie Milan, Jerry, Jeremy Ginsburg, 
Kate Bush, and Monica McNally. John Zagrowski to the IT Steering and Governance, Governance Advisory Committee. Is that the same committee? Yes. Yes. So I'm not on that committee. I'm happy to be shed of that duty. But if you'd like me on that committee. Um, I would like to change. I would. Yes. Um, I would like to change the um, people that are on that committee. And I would like to remove Monica McNally and add John Zagrowski at this time. Uh, no, I think that that is loud and clear. So again, we're going to remove Monica McNally, and we're going to add John Zagrotsky um, to the IT Steering Committee. John, thank you. Good eye. Good eye, um, whew, That was close. Um, our third committee is the Advisory Committee on Sustainability. And on that committee, we have five members, Carolyn Bain, Pam Sparkman, Dan Dulcetti, Cliff Voorhees, and Kathy Finnegan. Our Let's see, our advisory commission on coastal waters, we have nine members on that. We have Eric Barrett, William Cavers, David DeVere, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing people's names wrong too, Flip Hufford, David Kahn, Tom Lochtefeld, Grant Tankus, William Wright, and James Furlong. And on the Government Access TV 79 committee, we have Robert Flynn, Dennis Cummings, Carrie Wazowski, Jim Cameron, Mike Wheeler, David Dever, and Sean Calvillo. And so may I have a motion to re reappoint those advisory committee members? Did you leave out the advisory board of health? Oh, I did. Advisory board of health. Sorry about that. Didn't catch that. Um, four members there, Kevin Cunningham, Andy Math Mathieson, James Mack Patrick, and Christine Castles. Um, so, yes, six committees. Um, so, may I have a motion to reappoint? Um, thank you, Sarah. May I have a second? Thank you, Marcy. All in favor? Uh, that's unanimous. Um, thank you. And thank you for the service for everyone. Yes, yes. Um, all of these committees. Um, perform really important functions for the town, and we're very grateful for their um, volunteering. Next item on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes of the November 22nd regular meeting. Are there any additions, edits, deletions? I just have a quick one, Kate. On page two, under new business, mm -hmm. item number two, I would maybe add the word selectman in front of Burke. Say it again. Oh, yes, sorry. That's okay. Go ahead, Claude. I don't know. I mean, it's the first time I'm looking at really selectman minutes. I don't know if, as an efficiency matter, it was necessary to state the title of every single person every time they're referred to. Is that just. Oh, that's that chair. You're, you're being hip. Um, <laughs> so, um, we use a software, that's what I'm doing over here, is, ah, okay. and the software puts those titles in. Oh, it's good. There's no effort to do it. Yeah, it's so it's, it, it doesn't, yeah. Not okay. I like the efficiency thinking. It's all right. It's all, it sounds like it's extremely efficient. So that's Appreciate good. that. Oh, no, on your part, John. Thank you. This software makes it very easy, and then, you know, in the morning, um, I just download it into Word and, you know, add in some of the reports and it's pretty quick now. It's making us sound better than we actually are, so it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Well, I don't make you sound like much of anything. I don't put but, much in right, there. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are no other comments, uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Sarah moves. Mike seconds. All in favor? Okay. Uh, may I have a motion? Uh, let's review, I'm sorry, review and approve the minutes of the November 18th, 2021 special meeting. Are there any edits, additions, comments? Nope. 
Okay. May I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Marcy moves. Sarah seconds. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda, public comments. Do we have any comments, Kate? No. Nope. And we have no visitors. Um, so we will move to agenda review. Are there any topics that board members want to see put on the agenda? Um, and I want to remind everyone before I forget that the um, orienta orientation meeting is this Friday. Okay? 9 to, nine to 12, right, Kate? 9 to 12. In here, it will not be televised. Um, but come, you know, our lineup, I'll start, then Jen, um, <clears throat> likely Jeremy next, um, and Ed and the Chief. Um, and the plan is to, you know, get you familiar with some of your responsibilities, and, but also um, the three gentlemen will be um, bringing you up to date on what's happening in their departments, <coughs> because there's a lot going on in planning and public works and um, in, in the police department with different pieces of legislation, the different projects in town, and so we're going to try and give you a crash course um, so you'll be ready to address those issues as they come before you. I hate to have to say this, but my calendar filled up that morning, so I will not be here, but I will catch up with somebody separately to get filled in. So. Okay. Um, question for you. Last year, we started kind of going over the charter, see if we had any changes. Yeah. And then we kind of had some discussion over some items, but never pick them back up again. Are we going to be looking at some of that again? You know, I'd like to have a discussion with Wayne first mm -hmm. about because, as you recall, we started really diving into things. Mm -hmm. um, and then Wayne's like, well, you know, not all of those would be easy to do uh, by the RTM. So I'd like to have a discussion with him first about what we can do. Because there are things that maybe are pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So if he can give us what the parameters are, what um, what the RTM would be allowed to do if they were so inclined um, to do on their own without having to have a full-on charter revision. Would you mind if we kind of create a kind of a rough draft document of what suggestions maybe? What suggestions had to be made? Yeah. Yeah. Is that um, all right? Thank you. I know we have like from one conversation we have a couple and then. Thank you. Okay. Any other items? Nope. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Sarah? Mike seconds. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.